Are you are convinced that you're born out of love? Because I am. I'm not an accident. I'm not. And I want you to be aware that it's the most profound moment that mom and daddy was together. And they were loving to each other so much. God say, poof, Jose. <laughs> yeah, you better believe it because look at this. Where's the camera? You're close here? Okay, look at these eyebrows. This is from my daddy. <laughs> oh, yeah, look at that. I never touched it. You see how thick they are? I say, you see? They're nice, no? Uh, let me show you something from my mama. You see, I'm a big guy, but I have a small mouth. You see this lip? <laughs> that's my mama. And then, that's to prove you that mom and daddy put something here. For sure, my accent has come from mom and daddy. And then God, poof, he gave me the soul. Where he live, where he dwell. Where I feel his love, his mercy, and where he chose me. Where he took me. Where he led me. And where he moved me to a safe place in my life. Let me uh, give you a hint right here. I was born two months before. That means I was a seven-month baby. And I want you to know that I only wait... Three pounds, four ounces. If you multiply by 100. Da, 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 da. Okay, but after a year, after a year, because God, mom, and daddy, look at what happened. Hey, guys, put that picture right there. Oh, you are so sweet that I want to cry. You see? I always have a big head. You see that? <laughs> but I was very cute. Look at those legs. Thick leg. Yeah, I have thick leg right now. You see? And you see the little mouth? And you see my eyebrows, how it's showing out right there? Uh, 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 uh. That means, looking that, I know for the fact that God decided that what the doctor say that he going to die in two weeks, Eh, 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 eh. It's not going to happen. And God have a plan for me. And in his love, he have a plan for me. And he said, this little boy that everybody thinks that he's going to die, he's going to live. And he's going to do something in life that is important for him, for me, and for everybody. Especially mom and dad. Then I ask you, do you really believe that you are not an accident? Do you really believe that you was born out of love? Do you really believe that God is dwelling in you? Do you really believe that God is the force, the motivator, the person who takes you everywhere that you should go? And God is the person who helps you to say no when you have to say no and say yes when you have to say yes. Do you really believe that? Yes or no? When, if you believe that, I need you to be able to act upon it. Let me give you an example here for you. Number one. God called you by name. And he say, I'm going to be in you. And I will dwell in you. And I will be the motivator in your life. That you be able to pursue me in the same way that I pursue you. Once that happened, it's established a relationship between you and God. In the same way that I create that relationship with God. And the neatest part is that that relationship 
deserve three things. Number one, it's going to be a relationship. Number two, he's going to give you a precise call. For example, some of you, he's going to call to be a priest. Some of you, he's going to be called to be sisters, a brother. Some of you are going to be a doctor, teacher, whatever it is. But the fact is that that call is what you're going to live. But you will learn to be holy as a priest, as a sister, as a brother, as a doctor, as a lawyer, as a teacher. And even where you are right now as a high schooler, you have to learn to be holy. So if he calls you right now, you'll be able to meet your Lord face to face in all his glory. That means your call right now is that you must call you must answer his call to be a student, but not only to be a student, you must answer the call to be a student who is holy and follow him. You follow me? Yes or no? Good. And then when you say, Lord, yes, I'm going to answer the call and I will try my best to be holy. This is the neat part. God is not going to leave you alone. God is going to be with you, supporting you, so when the moment of distress comes, he gives you help and he pushes you, so you'll be able to go to the next level and you be able to live in his holiness. That means he's not going to create you and abandon you. No. He's not going to create you and say, now you're on your own. He didn't say that. He said, I'm going to be with you Always. And when he says that he's going to be always, he will answer to that. That is the reason why that you day by day walk. Day by day you walk to holiness. And day by day you learn and you get wiser in the same way that Jesus did. What happened is that we don't understand the call of holiness. For example, uh, the way that I do call of holiness is this. Saturday. When I say mass at 4.30, I say, Jose, you're in grace. You're a holy man. You're going to say mass. And I go, I say the mass, I give the blessing. Mass is sent to go in peace. Now I say, Jose, you have to be holy from 5.30 all the way till 7 o'clock in the morning that you have the first mass on Sunday. I go, send the mass, give the blessing, try to be holy. Then I say, Jose, now you have to be holy from 8 o'clock all the way till 9.30 so you can be able to say this other mass in holiness. They say, fine. And then it's 10 o'clock and I finish the mass and say, Jose, you have to be holy till 5.30. And then at 6.30 I say, Jose, you have to be holy until 6.30 in the morning to say mass in the morning. When you are able to live your life in commitment step by step, and you make small commitment day by day, it's very easy to be holy because you are in focus with God. But when you disfocus yourself from God and when you go apart from God, it seems to be very difficult to be holy. Why? Because you have not believed that the love of God is unconditional. You have not believed that the love of God is unconditional. It's no matter who you are, He's going to love you. How I prove that? Very simple. The love of God is his answer to you and is eternal. Let me give you a good example. When God loves you, he loves you with all his freedom. When he chooses you and the way that he chooses me, he chooses you in the pure love. It's no manipulation. It's not, you don't have to give something to him for him to be able to give you love. His love for you is not the same love that your friend gave it to you. It might not be the same love that your boyfriend gave to you. Well, if you have sex with me, then you love me. God is not asking for that. If you smoke dope with me, then you are my body. If you get drunk with me, you are my friend. If you think that your mom and dad are losers, they don't have no idea, then you are my body. If you don't go to church and you come to me with it, to eat, 
then you are my friends. God don't put in any, anything that you have to do. All you have to do is accept his love. As simple as it is. That means when people try to control you, to manipulate, you have to realize that's not true love. And you know what? Guys, let me go here down for a moment to tell you this secret. I have good luck with females. Yeah. I have the biggest luck with females. Let me tell you. I have the best girlfriend that God gave me. I was outside the church. I was like a loser. Not going to church and doing this and doing that. And she said, you're going to be my boyfriend? She said, okay, yes. But, you know, girls, when you say that, we all get nervous. You say, number one, you have to stop walking with all the bunch of losers that you walk. I say, okay. Number two, you have to respect me always. Okay. And then she say, number three, you now have to go to mass with me every Sunday. I say, what? You want to be a nun? <laughs> What's wrong with you? I said, well, if you don't want to take it, I know your girlfriend. Guess what happened? I was going to mass every Sunday because she was my girl. That means she was good and strong. And she brought me back. That's the way it was. You know, she was good. Number two, I have good luck with female because God gave me the best mama that I ever have in my life. Yeah. I have a mama that say, you're not going to do that. I just tell you that right now. It's not going to happen. Don't even dream about it. You're not doing that. And I have a mama that when we come to the house, she always have a candle lit. And the last person who come to the house have extinguished the candle. And I say to mama, it's so holy. She's so good. She loves us so much. Until finally I grew up a little bit and I discovered that this candle reflect in this glass that is in her room where she see him who is blowing the candle and who came last. Smart woman. Smart woman. And she was tough. She don't play. She said, you know what? I'm not going to hit you with my hand because you guys are too big. We are three boys. And my daddy four. I just want to be aware of that. Three. And she said, if I had to hit you with a stick, I'm going to hit you with a stick. And I don't care. But you all are going to be able to be a decent people. And you know what was the rule? Number one, you have to honor God above all sin. Number two, you have to honor mom and dad and make sure that if you're going to be in the paper, you're not going to be in the front part of the paper where all the bad stuff happens. You have to be in the back one where the good stuff is. Because if you mess her last name, you better, better run to Africa or someplace else. That's it. And number three, we have to go to church. That's it. That was not a good mama? To me, I have good luck with my girlfriend. I have a good luck with mama. And then you know what? Now I preach. Mama, blessed Virgin Mary. Tell me that I don't have a good luck with a woman. Yes or no? That means if you understand that it's very important that if you understand what is the love of God, you will understand that God will put that girl for you, that God will want you to be your girl for a reason. Whether she married you or not, she was part of your life for a reason. Or a boy, in the case that you were female. I cannot talk about boys that go a girl, you know. But anyway, number two, I believe that God chose my mama. And if somebody going to choose better, it's God, not Jose. You got the point? Yes or no? And number three, God knew that sooner or later mama would not be there. But he gave me a spiritual mother who protect me, lead me, and show me how to walk to Christ and how to love him. What I say to you is very simple. What I say to you is stop 
looking for love that is not real. Stop walking around like zombies looking for something that don't belong to you. Something that is trash. Something that is addicted. Something that is not holy. Something that is making difference in your life to separate you from God. That's the difference that he's doing. He's trying to separate you from And you are chosen. You belong to Christ. You belong to God. Because from the very beginning, he took time to create you. Poof! Out of love. And give you a soul where he can dwell for the rest of your life. Then my question to you is. Do you going to use the freedom that God gives you to make wrong decisions? Or are you going to use the decision, the freedom that God gives you to honor him and love him? How many of you were educated under the Baltimore Catechism? Not many of you high school, but a lot of mama and daddy. And, well, let me tell you this. The Baltimore Catechism have two basic questions in the first lesson. Number one, if you remember, repeat after me. Who is God? Remember that? God is our Father that is in heaven. Remember that? Number two, why God create you? Remember that? To love him, to honor him, to obey him, and to worship him for the rest of your life. That was the four element that was there. If you knew that, at least you know the basic. But then think about it. Look Deep in your heart and ask yourself, why God create you? Why God create you? Did he create you to you walk like a zombie? Not using the proper freedom? Not using your talent? To be submitted to slavery? To addictions? To trouble? And troubles and troubles and trouble? Instead to live a balanced life where holiness is part of it, where love is part of it, and mercy. I will tell you why I have issue with this. Zacchaeus, he has so much past in his life. And he was a big loser because he used his power to abuse of people. And Zacchaeus was so scared of Christ that he decided he decided to go into a tree. They say because he was little. I don't buy that one. Because nothing is better than a little child looking for you. You know, he didn't care. He's little. He pushed everybody until he get there. When you want to be meet Christ, or when you want to meet the Pope, you don't care. You're going right there. You don't care whether you're big or small, no matter what it is. When you want to meet somebody, you do it. I mean, if he want to see Christ, don't tell me the excuse that he got in the tree because he was sure. No. He was in the tree because he knew that he got issues. Because he knew that he had done wrong. Hey, when you smoke dope, you hide yourself, no? Yes or no? Okay. Yeah. When you have sex, you don't call your mama to watch you. You hide yourself, no? Yes or no? You got the point. That means when you have done something wrong or you are doing something wrong, you hide yourself. Zacchaeus hide himself in the tree. But I want you to know that in the same way that Jesus went to Zacchaeus, I want you to know that when you and I do something wrong, we cannot unhook Christ and leave it here. And walk here and do what is wrong. Christ is with you while you are committing that sins. Christ is you while you're getting drunk. Christ is with you when you're committing a mortal sin. When you're cursing your mama and your dad. When you don't honor them. When you mistreat your brothers and your sisters that God created for you. God is with you and you cannot unhook it. But in the middle of that mess, God is there. Contemplating this sad scene and trying to show you love so you understand that you were chosen from the very beginning of the world. Hey guys, this is more than a mystery. This is pure love. 
This is pure love. And we cannot comprehend because we have not understand yet once and for more that God is forever, is eternal. And the only one who can show you that word, that love is God himself. I just want to be aware of one thing. If he's somebody, this is a man that I ever loved in my life so much was my dad. And if he's a woman that I love so much that I, when she needs a kidney, I want to give it to her. Whatever I can do to have my mama with me, I could do it. But you know what? She died. But I understand that, that the only one who can remove that pain from me, it was God himself. And I was able to understand that for more that was that pain, I want you to know deep, deep in my heart that God was the only one, Jesus Christ was the only one who healed me and said, you have to move on in me. Trust me, it seems better in your life. And you're going to walk. And then my four nieces show up. I have four girls, beautiful girls to love. They're very expensive though. But, but it's a lot of love. People show up. Steuben Bill came in my life. Different places pop in my life. And I know that that was not Jose. That was God loving me at that moment. And helped me to understand that the love of God surpassed any problem, any difficulty. I don't know what is your tree. I don't know if your tree is dope. I don't know if your tree is alcohol. I don't know if your tree is pornography. I don't know if your tree is any addiction, premarital sex, cursing, misleading your mom and your dad, abusing, bully other people. I don't know what is your tree that you have to hide when Christ passed. But I want you to know that tonight you have a chance to get rid of that tree. I've been waiting for you down there in confession. If you want to get down that tree and walk free and walk in love and feel the breeze of the Holy Spirit and rekindle your life back, rekindle your commitment, the love that he feels for you. That's what it mattered today. It's no matter what we have done. Because tonight he's going to say, Sakel, I'm going to go to eat with you today. Today he's saying to you all, I've been waiting for you to forgive you, to give you his mercy and his love. This is what I want you to be aware of this. I never want to lie for you. But the truth sometimes is very difficult to say. I don't want pain the truth for you. No, and I don't want to brush your lies and the life of my life when I was your age of my mistake today. Yeah, because I have a big mistake. It's my temper. I have a big temper. That's my problem. I have a big temper. I can get mad very easily. But you know what? I don't want to waste my life in the stupidity of a sinfulness. Where we believe that there's secret. Where we believe that we only know them. When we believe that nobody knows that. I just want you to know. Your sinful, knife, your sinful life is well known by your friends. Your sinful life is exposed in Twitter and Facebook. When you bully some people very nasty on Facebook, everybody knows who you are. A bully and a person who don't have a life. Yeah. Bullies don't have life. That's why they made other people's life miserable. They don't have a life. They want to fight with you. When you do this and you do that, everybody knows that. I mean, guys, if everybody knows it, why not to seek forgiveness and once and for all say, I will accept that love. Because the love of Christ is so powerful that he's willing not to give you a kidney, not to give you a uh, liver or a pancreas, not to give donation of your eyes or whatever. He was able to give his whole life for you and me 
So we can feel that that law is the only thing that will fulfill me. Guys, you're chosen. You cannot unhook God. He's here. That's why you and I feel guilty when we do wrong. That's why we feel like a jerk. Why we did it? Because we are chosen. We belong to a king. We are priests to celebrate. We are prophets to proclaim the truth. And we belong to the kingship where it's not only life on earth, but it's a kingdom that waits for us up there. It's bigger than you ever imagined. Because his love is forever. His love will ever endure. And his love is for you and me, no matter if you're holy today or not. No matter if you're white or you're black. No matter if you're oriental or Latino. No matter if you're a Jew or you're a Muslim or you are whatever you are. No matter if you're male or female. No matter who you are, his love is there for you and always be there. All what we need to do is get down on the tree. Get down on the tree and stop being fake. Get down on the tree, be for real, and you will feel that that love that always was with you, dwelling in you, will come to you, renew you, make you holy, and your joy and your happiness and the blessing and the presence of God will dwell for you forever. God bless you.